Hey friends, so we're going to get started on this cute little snowman in a little snow globe. It was actually from a craft project that I found online that they were using plastic wine glasses, the kind that the stem comes off of. Yeah, who'd have thought that? Let's get started. All right, hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and we are here with another one of my daily paintings, my other snowman cards, which is put in the background and make it look like it was snowing. So that's our first step is we're going to use this blue. It's kind of a cerulean blue. And this time, instead of putting my brush across the whole page, I think I'm just going to spritz it with water and then just start adding my blue in. A little different. Now this is going to be one of my little snowmen, snow people, but they're going to be inside of a snow globe. I think that's going to be really cool. And something that I know is that when you're looking at something through the glass, it's not going to be as bright. It's a little more muted. So I can work this color that's in the center, kind of push it out to the edges. Now this paper is super, super wet. So I'm going to let this settle in for just a minute. Maybe I'll put a little bit of the ultramarine blue around the edges. Get it that nice wintry color. I like that. See how it has that sort of foggy, out of focus, lighter blue in the middle than the outside edges. And I am going to dry my, rinse my brush off, dry my brush off. And now what I want to do is just sort of suck up a little bit of this water that's around the edges, wipe it off, wipe off the brush. That's kind of cool. Just the water goes up into these wet bris the brush bristles are wet, but they're, they're drier. <laughs> Boy, I can't talk. The brush bristles are damp, but they're drier than the puddles of water. And so the water just sort of goes and sucks into the brush. I'm kind of tapping it to see if that does anything. I guess if I tap it on a slight angle, it's going to give us a little bit. Ooh, that's going to be pretty. Look at that. It's giving us a bit of a, an angle, almost like clouds. So it's sort of swooshing sh across. I want it to dry just a little bit more. So it's not shining but it's still damp. So we're going to wait for just a minute. Actually, while I'm waiting, I'll let you know, I do have a coloring book on my spring store. And if you click that link, my tray over to the side or down below the video, it has a, my Snowman and Friends coloring book. And it has coloring book pages that are similar to these guys. Now, not exactly the same, but similar. So if you don't want to draw your snowman, you don't have to. Just realize that I didn't draw before I did this. Oh, yeah. So we're drawing our snow person on after. But I think I'm going to take my towel and kind of dab out just a little bit right here in the middle where I know the snow person is going to be. 
generally. He's generally going to be in this area. Still shining. We don't want shiny paper, but I don't want to dry it with the heat tool because if I dry it with the heat tool, it's going to settle everything down into the paper right away and it's not going to give us that lovely little snowflake effect. It's almost, it's still a little shiny. Not too bad. I think I want to go ahead and I'm just getting a number eight round dipped in water and I'm going to get some snowflakes on here. Just plain water and what it does is it pushes the pigment that's on the paper around and gives you that lovely snowy glittery look. And if your snowflakes get to the size that you want, now is when you hit it with the hair, the hair dryer or the heat tool to stop it. You want to stop the movement. Oh, nice and dry. I'm using the back edge of my hand to test to see if it's dry. If it wasn't dry, it would feel cool or damp to my hand. All right. Now we need to get this drawn on. And I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and put the little dome over. So it's like a... just a little arched glass dome. What it is, this particular one is from a wine glass. Those plastic wine glasses that you can get at the dollar store that have that base on them, what they did is they left, the nub, left that nub of the base on the end of it and they were able to tie all of the ribbon and different things that go up that are going up on top. I'm just stealing their idea, but their snowman is not very cute. I want a cute snowman. <laughs> so we're gonna come around. There will be some little bit of white probably put in here, and I will be using the P Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White if I need to put any white inside the snow globe and for my highlights on the outside of it. And now we're going to go ahead and say pointy little hat. I'm gonna give the little point up here and I think this one's going to have like the little tinsel spray coming off the top. The hat's gonna to come down. Just a triangle. There's gonna be the tinsel stuff going on around. I like the fluffy tinsel. So we're going to get some fluffy tinsel on there. See, I've worked back and forth and up and down. So don't worry. This is your drawing, your art, and it's going to look the way you want it to look. It doesn't have to look like mine. His little head. I think this one's getting a, maybe a knit scarf. So kind of a rectangle going across. I'm gonna put his nose right down here next to that rectangle. And his little eyes, I'm gonna be over to the sides. Just, just those little eyes, I like putting kind of the little ball with the black. There we go. The ribbing on his scarf. Let's zoom that in even more. Look at him. Isn't he coming in cute already? The little tree, I think, is going to be going. 
going to say it comes to about here. I'm just going to get it put in with a little bit of some dots. Kind of like that. Now I know where his, let's see, maybe his scarf is going to come across in front of the tree. By just putting it in with dots, it's okay because I can do things like put his stripes going sideways or diagonally. Look at that. And then his little body is actually a I'm giving him the kind of the bowling pin. I think that's what it is. He, he has sort of the bowling pin body, the head, and the body coming down and we're going to say that this is on that side. This doesn't, the, the way that it got drawn on here doesn't make sense. That's okay. It doesn't have to. It is a snow person in their magical dome. We put some little stripes on the hat. So that way it kind of goes along with the theme, the stripes on the snowman, the I think that I am going to even put some balls on this little tree. I'm just having fun and I'm making this up as I go along. You can make yours up too. It doesn't have to look like anybody else's. And you know, little bottle, br bottle brush trees. I think maybe he's getting a star on top of his little tree. It's going to be wonky. I like wonky stars. They make me happy. <laughs> I hope that you're doing things that make you happy also. You know, you just, you just have to make your heart happy and the rest of the world will fall into place in some way. So if you're doing things that make you happy, truly happy, not, you know, the, unless chasing the dream is making you happy, then chase your dream, chase, chase that American dream, that, uh, that monetary dream, if that's what really makes you happy, but, oh, I needed a ball over here, but you know what? Chase those dreams that just make your heart sing. Right now, my dream is coming to a reality, one of my dreams, and that's getting my channel to 100,000 subscribers. We are so close to 4,500 left to get. I'm at almost 95.5, really, really close. And, you know, a year from now, if you're watching this in 2022, I will probably be there already. But right now, that's where I am. I'm just doodling. I'm just drawing in little, little ideas here. I want something over here also. So maybe we'll put another little tree. I want to swing that out just a little bit too. This is just an office pen. It's the Uniball Signo RT1. It is the 0.28. The ink is waterproof. We're going to give him just a couple little bottle, bottle brush trees. And by putting them in with the dots like this, it gives texture to the tree texture to the tree. 
and then it makes it easy to adjust because I didn't do it, you know, drawn in really harsh. Maybe one more. It's going to be a little bigger. There we go. See, just make you happy. I like that. All right. Just get the texture in there real quick. You can tap it from the edge and you get like tiny little less, uh, less ink comes out. You can tap it straight up and down. Just don't dent your paper. Don't pound it in so hard that it's denting the paper because your paint will settle down into the dents. Look at that. So now I can actually put a little bit more definition on that line that's in the back. I'm going to make this tree come down. There we go. And it's going to get darker. Doing a little bit of those shadows with my dots. I used to stipple all of my art. All of my art was doing the stippling. That's making all those tiny dots and putting them close together or putting them farther apart to get your texture and your shading. So that's, that's what I used to do. Now I really like this one that has, it's this edge going all the way around and the outside, you see a little bit of that through the glass. It has that tinsel pipe cleaner that's like sealing this edge. So I'm just going to go and put the, the little sketchy lines in for that tinsel pipe cleaner just because I like it. And it also disguises that edge so that you don't have to have a perfect, perfect shape there because pipe cleaners are not perfect. They're wonky and wobbly and this is really making me happy. All right. So look at that. We've got a very, very light line here going up and over. I think that I think he's in the dome. I don't, I don't know that I really want to have, maybe we'll put a star. I don't, star on that side. I'm not sure. I don't think I really want anything else on there. I think all the decoration is inside and this is a very sophisticated looking guy. All right, we're gonna get some paint on here. Starting off, I am going to get some shadows in. And because we have been painting with the same palette, I have some of that ultramarine blue, the rose, and a little bit of that cerulean blue here. And I'm going to use this to start getting in some of that shadow. This is the number four silver black velvet brush get the shadows in underneath of the scarf grab a touch of water bring that like this There's some shadow in underneath of that tree on his tummy or down where his feet are. This is something I love about watercolor is that you can have that color on your palette 
and you don't have to you don't have to clean it if you don't want to since I'm doing all of these paintings relatively close to each other I you know in time like one a day I am able to continue to use the same colors and it's giving me a very cohesive very it's giving me the look that makes it so these all you know they all go together because the colors are all in that same color family Get a little bit more that rose in that make it a little more deeper purple my darker shadow I like it. Now, they've actually shown that if you are doing something, especially when it's a new thing that you're doing, and it's, you know, you've got a, you know, performance based, I guess is what it is. It's the, you've got an outcome that you will either like or not like. If as you're doing it, you tell yourself you like it, you are going to end up more often than not liking the end result better. If you've told yourself all along that you like it, if you've been looking at it going, I hate this. Oh, 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 I hate. Why? Why did I do that? Oh, I hate that you're probably not going to be happy with the end result and you're not going to like it. And you're going to tell yourself that you don't. I'm just going back in and softening up some of those transitions just with water and moving the paint that's on there. That is looking so sweet. I'm going to grab a touch of this orange color and sort of rub it on my palette just a little bit. There's a little orangey red right there. And because I'm working really quite dry, I can get away with painting colors next to each other. I think I want to put, let's see, do we want to go kind of pink rose? some of that red some of that oh yeah there we go I needed a little bit of that other red to go in here we're gonna do little red balls I think magenta rose and I'm leaving a highlight and this one this light or this this ball was right over the top of some of my stippling. It's okay. Look at that. We're leaving that little that little bit of glow. And they already have shape. I am going to take a tiny bit of that ultramarine blue and mix it in because it makes a real pretty purple. We're going to darken up Make a darker, darker, darker color. And we're going to go to the bottom edge. And then maybe around just a little bit. So I'm just dropping some color in. It's wet still, so it might take over in some spots. Closer to the tree, it's going to be a little bit darker. Make these little shines. I like these little glowing ornament balls. Very pretty. I think that the tops of these trees let's see maybe we're gonna clean off that. Grab a little bit of this 
think it's a cad yellow hue put it in on that star tiny touch of water Now the after we've got it all painted, we will go back and we will put a little bit of a shadow line on the inside of this dome. And we will put uh, maybe some little reflections of some of the colors. So we need to know what colors we're using before we can put those reflections in. Grabbing a little bit more of that yellow. I'm going to make these little balls yellow. And I just put my hand in the paint right here. So be careful. That's part of uh, not doing it the right order. I should have done things on the left-hand side and then worked my way to the right. That's looking good. I think his scarf is going to be, I think his scarf is going to be a Sort of a soft soft green maybe this green maybe i'll make the trees pink so i'm going to use this soft green right here i know on the on the palette there it doesn't look really green but don't worry it's going to look green see right here And I think maybe we're going to leave those light stripes. I like that. Yeah. And then we'll come back in with a little bit of some darker green to shadow in. And I'm going to go ahead and put the green on the hat also. Not worried about coloring right over the top of where the tinsel is because we're using the Dr. PH Martin's silver to do the to do the little shiny bits. So I'm enjoying that. We're going to take some of that sap green, a, just a more concentrated amount, and I'm going to go right in under the edge. I'm not even worried. Notice I'm not even letting this dry. You can, you can certainly let this dry. There we go. Put a little bit of a dark right up around that edge down here in the bottom. So it feels a little poofy, a little fluffy. little bit of shape dimension not too much stuff just a little bit just something to to make you happy these paintings are certainly making me happy i think i'm going to be sticking in the retro holiday card time though because boy I've been looking at, at references for ideas and these little retro holiday cards just keep making me happy. All right, we're going to put just some of that, maybe even that, that other green, just a bit. I want some shadow up in here. So when I put the So when I go in and put the silver and flick it up in there, there will be some shadow. Just bringing that around just a bit. Ah, yeah, he's looking sweet. And maybe I'll put a little bit of Just a touch in that 
shadowy area there. Give it a little bit of texture. I think these trees definitely are going to be pink. Put a little bit of that striping next to the white. There we go. This is watercolor. It'll flow. It'll move. Sometimes it'll end up places you didn't expect it to. You just let it go. Enjoy and have fun. I'm going to go and put some of this burnt sienna. on the trunks. And then a little bit of burnt umber right up underneath. So it's got that shadow. I know, I, I drill into some of these details, probably more than I should, but I'm having fun. And this is, you know, my daily painting practice. So I'm here to have fun. This is yellow ochre. It's just regular yellow ochre watercolor paint. It's not anything special. Yellow ochre does tend to be a little bit more opaque. not as transparent as some other colors. It's okay. There we are. And just because I am feeling it, we're going to take a little bit of wop, wipe those water drops off the ferrule. We're going to take some of that ultramarine blue. I'm going to put a little bit of shadow. Sort of underneath of things. So under the little snow person. Kind of pushed up against the back edge. Into that background. Oops, I just hit my yellow ochre. Oh well. Ultramarine blue. Push it into that back edge. Around the front, on the inside, on the ground. Some of these lines I like better than others. We can take a little bit of that Dr. P.H. Martins and put it down in there, either silver or white. A little bit darker at the back corner. Way in the back. Way back. There we go. Now we need it to be darker right underneath the edge. I think I'm just going to grab some of that burnt umber. just so we get a little bit of this darkened little shadowy bits. Sort of make those little wood discs that they're standing on feel a little more dimensional. The tops are lighter than the sides. I'm making this up as I go along. So pink trees. Basically, I'm going to use the rose and a lot of water. And maybe a touch of the, the white that's here in the palette. Oh, there we go. It's making it a tint.
a little bit more opaque. Whoops. There we go. They dropped a big old plop of water on there. Leaving some area with the highlight on there a little. Just just a touch, just a touch. Not, not too worried about making perfection. Just picked up a little bit more of that, that rose. See how this is coming together though? You know, not, it's not hard. Mm, that was a lot of paint. And I shouldn't have done this one in the, such a, a rose because it's almost the same color as the balls that I just put on there. So I'm really going to have to work this out. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes that happens. You put just too much color. And you have to work it out. There we go. Now I am having fun and I am enjoying that. I do have to move that color along, move it along. Just come up there a little bit. See how we just keep working. You'll make it. I also grew my tree out just a little bit. It was a little too skinny at the top. Oh, we are so close. Look at that. A little bit more of that darker rose right up here under the tr star. And then pull some of that down. And I'm looking at it going, you know, We'll, we'll just put a little bit of that darker color underneath of those ornaments. Sometimes you know exactly what something needs. Sometimes you have to play and, and putz around with it a little bit to see what it's going to do. Look at that. Put a few more dots in and it kind of disguises that foofy bit that I made. Now it feels a little bit more together. I need to come over. I've got a water drop on my barrel again. Bring that edge out just a smidge and then soften it in. I don't want it to have outlines. I really like those guys, but that one, his little tree trunk is not coming up all the way to the pink. And if it doesn't come up all the way to the base, it looks like the top was floating and we don't want that. Well, unless we do, <laughs> you know, we might've wanted magic floating Christmas trees, right? A little bit of that brown in here. So now the glass, 
we're going to do a gray, a grayed out, a grayed out color. So I'm using burnt umber and ultramarine. To make a real blue gray. That's real pretty blue gray. Now I'm sort of getting some of that paint out by twirling my brush and letting it sort of wring itself a little bit. And looking at it here, we've got some shadow and light. So starting off, shadow and light. I'm just gonna go right over, let it squish out a little bit, let it go thin and leave some leave some room for sparkle. So few little lines in the inside back. Kind of going up and down and side to side just a little bit. These are sort of the shadow in the background. I see that I'm going to need a little bit very light, a little bit of some of that uh, green in there, a little touch of some sort of washed out yellow in there. We're just getting some of those colors that are in the background inside of the sparkle. I need very watered out. A little bit of that pink color sort of shining up into the onto the glass. It's just sparkling around in there. And it looks kind of messy right now. Don't worry. What's going to happen is we're going to put um, white highlights on here, but I do want to make sure that I have enough shadow, whoops, too much water, enough shadow down inside, and then we'll have a little bit of white added. There are a few little spots where some of this comes down over, so I'm going to actually go and Take a line that's coming from the top, coming right down over my snowman. Kind of thinking about the shape of the tree or shape of the glass. Might even need a slightly darker. A little bit more of my dark gray color. Keep it on that blue side. Too much water on my brush. Swinging down. There we go. There we go. A little bit of that around that side there. Sort of streaking down. And then I want that dark under here also.
because we need those shadows down here too. And then soften it out just a smidge. And now this is trial and error. This is not rocket science here, guys. I am not, I have not done a sample of this one. You, you saw me figure this one out right here in front of you. I hope you enjoy this little bit longer kind of video like this. If you do, make sure that you click that like button and subscribe to the channel. Let YouTube know that people like you like this video because the more people that hit the like button, it lets YouTube know that you're enjoying this. You also let YouTube know that you're enjoying a video by watching the whole video. Oh my goodness, that's looking so cute. Notice that I'm a little bit flat right up there. Let's see if I can work some of that gray out just a bit. We're going to be putting white on here, so it'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely what I needed. And then just smooth that one out. All right. He is looking so cute. Before I do the white though, I need, and the silver, I need to go ahead and dry. So that's what I'm gonna do. And we're just going to be using white and silver now. So first we're gonna go silver. Always shake. These paint, or these colors do separate. Uh, the Golds tend to separate more than the silvers do. Just a little, just a little. See, we don't need a ton. I'm still using that number four round. I'm gonna go in and give him his sparkly little top on his hat. Pull down. This almost feels like fringe on his, from his head. Snowmen don't have hair, but it feels almost like fringe. There we go. Put a little bit, I'm gonna flip this guys. I have to move the, the painting instead of forcing my hand to go in weird angles. I do have some hand issues. So I need to be cognizant, be aware what's what I'm doing. Oh, look at that. Already looking good. I think I'm going to use the silver to put little sparkle highlights on the balls. Not anything too, you know, over the top. I'm going to put a little bit of it in on the star and over on those. I think that's good. We've got the area down here, around the base, go this way, work towards me. Instead of flicking it out, I'm pulling it in. Let's see how that works. And remember that this does dry on your brush if you have a super expensive brush that you absolutely adore. You may not want to use the ink with it. Find another 
find another brush. Oh, let's see. Maybe we'll put a little bit of water on there. This is waterproof when it's dry, but it is water soluble when it is wet. So you can clean your brush with just plain water. There's no, no smell, no odor. This tiny little indication there and then floof it out. Sort of up against the glass. And see how it works with that shadow that we put in. I am going to take just a tiny little bit of that paint on this brush, kind of flatten my brush out. See, kind of flatting, flattening it. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a light brush right over the trees couple things that does it sparkles the trees up it also is slight the silver is slightly opaque and it's so it will tone the trees down just a little bit look at that and then I want a little bit of that sparkle on the snowman down here a little bit right up there a little bit on his face okay I lied I do need a little bit of this dark purple right under his eyes and under the nose that carrot and I'm going to put a little bit of it along the edge of that hat oh, so cool now we are looking at this and going alright what do we need we need we need white And not because the snowman needs any white. We just need the white for the uh, for those highlights. So I'm grabbing my brush is clean. I'm just going to grab a not that much, not too much. Just just grab some of the bleed proof white out with a clean brush. And what I do is I shake my jar and then I scoop it off the lid instead of dunking my brush down into the paint. So now looking at this going all right we're, we're going to go with a tiny little bit of some highlight right over the top. Letting it break, letting it Letting that highlight just sort of come in and come and go, a come and go. There's, you can wet this down or dilute it a little bit with just plain water so that it flows nicely. Now the, the white is going to come forward it's not going to the color isn't going to bleed through but if you rub this back and forth over an area you will pick the color up so be careful there's like some sparkle lights some highlight that's a little more diffused kind of swoop across the front 
and then grab a little bit more and go swoop across the front in a curved arc see how that's making it feel like that glass is around these spots up here keeping them curved so that they feel like they're They're coming forward. They're following the arc of the actual container, the, the glass, the dome, the cup, the whatever you're, whatever you're doing it on. There's a bit of some shine down in here. I'm purposefully taking it over some of these darker areas so that it will Feel like the glass is in front of it or over the over the whole thing and I am really pleased I think we might have a couple little dots coming down in the very front these are like light from lights sparkling you want a few of those sort of the light is reflecting on here from around the whatever the space is that this is sitting in <laughs> oh that feels real that feels real I'm going to go ahead and sign it we're probably gonna sign it right and right about here. Take the tape off. <laughs> and see what we look, see how we did. How do we do? It already feels really good. Pull that tape off. This is the last time I'm using that tape. <laughs> I used it for four paintings, so I think that it, it deserves its, its retirement. <laughs> Look. Oh, that is so sweet. Oh, the only thing, I wanted to put a couple buttons on him. Ah. And we're going to go with, I think, green buttons. Two little green buttons. I just grabbed whatever brush I grabbed and a little bit of the purple underneath of it. See? And then we'll put, see if there's any of that silver float in there still. A little bit of silver on it. Ah, there we go. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to click that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and be on the lookout. I will be announcing probably Monday or Tuesday the whole set being released as a downloadable so that you can download and print cards. Thank you so much for coming along on this journey. I hope that you will follow along with me as I do more fun daily painting. And uh, we'll, let's see where this journey takes us. You know, painting daily grows your skills. Remember, go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. I want to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye.